listen to what the psalmist say. I'm going over to chapter, uh, to the 116th division of the psalm here. Psalm 116 and verse 12. You see, the psalmist understands that God has been mindful of us. And he asks this very pertinent question. He says, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? You may be looking and saying, oh, my, my dear Michelle is gone. But have you considered how much she has enriched your life while she was alive? Isn't that something to praise the Lord for? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You see, you, you don't understand. There are times when so many things are happening, they seem to weigh us down. But you know, I look forward to walking into church and, and to see my ushers at the door and with the smile that they with which they greet you and let me tell you something when this wonderful woman of god greets you with a smile no matter how sad you were you have to cheer up i want you to understand this she had an infectious smile let me tell you something you don't know the worth of a smile i've heard the story of someone who was sick and about to die and one smile added life to his failing moments. Let me tell you something. Sometimes I feel heavy. And just by interacting with people and looking at those smiles, my heart is buoyed up. Michelle was a genuine person. Listen, I'm not here to say something to make it look good. Anybody who knew Michelle can testify that she was a genuine person. There's a new by her interaction. She was genuine. Let me tell you something. I miss her too. Seaside, beloved friends. And uh, I was just reflecting. I, I, from that moment, I said to the Lord, I don't want to think anymore. I was wondering what he was going through when he was taking his last breath. And those things were depressing. But when I started to reflect on our last meeting, oh man, we were playing his guitar. And he would play a song and i take the guitar and i play my song and we would chat. And then we start the music again and, and we talked about life, we talked about marriage, we talked about everything we, we, we were just having. I didn't know it would have been the last meeting, but it was a fruitful meeting. I recounted the years. I remember when I was going to purchase, we, my wife and I was going to purchase real estate, and, and I called him. I said, you know, we have this important decision to make. What is your advice? And he began to uh, ask questions like, uh, you he said, Chris, don't purchase until you have seen that place in different conditions. So he said, listen, watch the skies when it rains. Go and take a look at the place and see what's going on there with the water. He, would, he, he, he gave me some instructions what you just couldn't pay for with money. Are you listening to me? I began to count my blessings. I began to reflect on the wonderful person he was and I choose to count my blessing. Listen to me. Don't sit down and grope in darkness because of your loss. Think about how much you have gained in the over 50 years that she has been alive. Are you listening to me here? And the psalmist asked the important question here. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? And listen to what he says. He says, I, I will do what? I will take up the cup of salvation. Will somebody say amen? I'm happy amen. that Michelle took up the cup of salvation. Amen, somebody. I will take up the cup of I salvation. Be. I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my I'm vows to the Lord to now you. in the presence of your all his people. Hallelujah. Thank verse 15 is the sweetest verse. 
It says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I thought that death was just cold and ugly and all kind of that. But the Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Can you say it with me? Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Michel has died a precious death. And I am looking forward to the time when my Lord will burst the clouds of heaven. When the trumpet of the Lord shall have sounded. And the saints, the dead in Christ will rise. The Bible says, and this is found in First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 down. The Bible says the rest of the dead, those who are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. You know, I don't know who is next. I don't know if this is my last sermon. I don't know. It is very possible. But you know something? I'm not afraid to die. Because I have Jesus. Some people don't like to hear me say that. But listen to me. <laughs> if I should die, I know I'd be resting in my Lord, awaiting the grand reunion. If you should die today, would you have died with the assurance of salvation? Have you taken up the cup of salvation? Are you paying your vows to the Lord? I still remember that little song that Jody and Maxwell did when he was when she was a little girl. He said, What shall I give to him, the great I am? She says, I don't have much to give, but I'll give my heart. I wonder if there's somebody here today who will say, Preacher, I want you guys to pray for me because I want to give my heart to Jesus. I feel impressed to ask somebody to indicate your desire for Jesus. And as Pastor Ed Lee prepares to do the prayer, for the baby family. I'm going to ask him to pray for you. Is there somebody here today? You have not yet surrendered all to Jesus. But you want to say preacher. Please pray for me. Because I want to surrender to the Lord one day soon. Is there one here today? Raise your hand. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. I know you are not used to this at a funeral service. But God is taking a record. I have promised the Lord I will never preach a sermon. Without making an appeal. If there's somebody here today, I would like for us to pray for you. Just raise your hand right now. Don't be afraid now. Don't be shy. Should I assume that everybody here are Christians? You have already taken up the cup of salvation. Should I assume so? Nobody wants to be prayed for. Hallelujah. Well, if it is so, that all of you have already surrendered. Praise God. Praise God. I see that hand. The Lord said my word will not return unto me void. Thank God for you. Pastor, as you pray for the family, please pray for my sister who raised her hand. And I want you to know something. I want you to move from just having a desire to making a decision. I hope that in very short order will turn it all over to Jesus. God bless you. Amen. I'm Glenn Family 4 out to you guys. R.I.P. to Auntie Michelle. At this time, we will be having a special prayer for the very family. And I'm going to kindly ask for the members of the bereaved family to remain seated and the remainder of us, the congregation, to stand with me as we pray.
What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful and grateful this afternoon that you are a God of love, a God of peace, a God of strength, a God of comfort. And it is because of your divine power, your grace, and your mercy that we know that we can find the comfort and solace that we need to get through difficult times. We thank you, Father, that your love is everlasting, that your grace and mercy have no bounds, that your comfort and encouragement is always available to your children when they are in need. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for the life of our dear sister, Michelle Hogan. We thank you, Lord, for the time that you have lent us her. We thank you for the time that she would have shared with us. We thank you for her impact on her community, her family, and in a particular way, her church. We thank you for her love for you. We thank you for her commitment and her service that she would have uh, carried out to this church. And Lord, we know that there is an irreplaceable void that now exists within the family. There, there is something that is missing that cannot be replaced. But we thank you, Father, that in the midst of your presence, we can find hope, we can find peace, we can find joy. So we ask you, Lord, that this void that has been created, we ask that your Holy Spirit will consume it and that you will abide with the family. That they will find strength and comfort and solace in your divine presence. So we ask you now, Lord, that you will absorb their pain. Absorb their sorrow. Absorb the... the, the the, the, the feelings that, that, that they are having. And I ask that you will grant them a peace that passeth all understanding. That they will be encouraged that we serve a God who has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. That we serve a God who has promised that those who have died in you, we have the assurance that we will see them again when you shall come. So I ask you, Father, that the family will be strengthened and encouraged by this fact that that death will not last forever, but that you are coming, and when you shall come, death itself shall be destroyed. So we ask you, Lord, that they will be comforted, that your spirit will abide with them, that you provide for any needs that they may have, and that they will recognize that you are there. So I present all the family members, all the friends, everyone who uh, Michelle has impacted. We just ask that you will grant them your peace, your comfort, your love, your divine touch, and that they will know that, that you are with them. Lord, we thank you for salvation. And we ask you, Lord, that each of us will accept this precious gift so that we can be saved and secured in your arms. We thank you so much for the hand that was raised. We ask that you will bless uh, your daughter who raised her hand. We ask that you will grant her uh, 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 that victory that she's in need of, that you will tend to her and grant her uh, 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 your salvation as she seeks to commit herself to you. So we ask you, Lord, that each of us will seek to endeavor to claim you as Lord and Savior. And that by faith we will look forward to that day when you shall come. When there shall be no more suffering, no more sadness, no more pain, no more distress, no more uh, difficulties or problems of this life. We ask that you will keep us faithful to this end. 
once again I present the family into your divine care. And I ask about that each of us will remain faithful so that we shall see you face to face when you shall come. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. R.I.P. Auntie Michelle, love you. Or yourself, mama. Make up yourself, Auntie Sally. Rest up yourself, Marlene.